where I live and I know the country quite well, there are some factors that, that I can't quite get my head around. And one is um, I find myself trying to copy the world and that just doesn't kind of do it for me. I also find that the, the, the I rarely use the colours that are, that are just there because it doesn't seem to be evocative enough of the sensations aroused by the experience of being there. Um, but if I find that I'm not travelling too well in the studio, then I take things out and I work out there. And, and I mean, I'm swinging between that, you know, more overtly representational and then, you know, much less representational. And so one picture can sort of go what I feel like is right up to the edge of it's what I can tolerate and another one back the other way. Yeah. I mean in the end you're only painting what you can tolerate. If you can't mm -hmm. tolerate it, you paint it out. I moved to Coogee when I was in third year art school at the National Art School and that was 15 years ago and I haven't left. This painting, I've probably painted 10 paintings of similar compositions, <coughs> different um, times of the day. You know, um, it's obviously living on the coast. The light changes so dramatically all the time. A placeholder in mathematics is a zero, you know, holds a placeholder. and enables us to have tens and hundreds and thousands. And it's this little invention in the history of, of nothing that actually does something. So for my painting, it's, it's no, a nothing there that holds a place for something. So it's, it, for me, it is about changing and moving and, and all that's rooted in a type of looking that pays attention to perhaps the passing away of things rather than an arrival point of things. And painters are aware of the mechanics and poetics of how to keep the viewer's eye and mind moving laterally, diagonally, and sure, into depth, but always bringing them back because the second you let the eye disappear out the back, the whole thing sort of closes down. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Paddington Art Prize Exhibition of National Finalists in 2015. I think now I may introduce Jane Waters, who will formally open the exhibition. Thank you, Jane. Thanks very much Marlene for inviting me to here tonight on the occasion of the announcement of the winner for the 2015 Paddington Art Prize for Landscape Painting. Landscape painting occupies an important place in the history of Australian art and its development over the past two centuries resonates with the changes in our attitudes and society. At first it was our colonial settler artists bewildered by the wild impenetrable bush they encountered who sought to create works that evoked scenes of the familiar, idealised pastoral settings reminiscent of the English countryside inhabited by genteel folk. These images, essentially a way for them to make sense of the new, this new unknown land and to reassure the folk back home that everything was safe. Glover's painting of his house in Tasmania depicting a wild, established cottage garden amidst a lands, Australian landscapes, affirms the belief that this wild land could be tamed. Landscape painting continues to develop and, and more and more artists are drawing from their own personal experiences of the landscape rather than just to depict representations. Artists are referencing the past, the future and the present to gain a sense of place and to develop a uh, deep spirituality unlike that in the traditional Western canon. Today it is apparent that the emotional response <coughs> by non-Indigenous artists and their growing respect for the rich Indigenous culture that they've grown to know about have given landscape painting renewed vigour and vitality. It's heartening to see this exhibition and other exhibitions like it focusing on the landscape and to see you know, how far it's come and where it's going to. It's a very exciting time. And it reaffirms a vision of our country and an ongoing as an ongoing source of inspiration and a place for understanding the human condition. Congratulations to all of the artists who have entered this prize. Please continue to support it. It's a, a really important prize. 
and to those who work, whose works hang here tonight, a special you know, congratulations to you. So I'm sure this is the moment you know you're coming up to Bainford to find out who's the winner. So thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the exhibition. Thank you, Jane, so much for that wonderful. Uh, opening speech about this wonderful country of ours. Um, I, I just realised I had so many notes. I forgot to thank someone very important this evening, and that was the judges. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm just going to have to uh, say thank you to Michael Nock. He couldn't be with us tonight, uh, but sends his very best regards to all of the artists, all of the finalists, um, and uh, Ewan McLeod, many thanks to Ewan, and to Peter Sharp. I, I really appreciate you giving your time and your considerable expertise uh, in, in performing this very difficult job. Um, there were many entries, uh, it was uh, a record number of entries this year. Uh, so the finalists can be justly very proud uh, of being selected. And I know it was a hard job for, for the judges. Um, so I, I guess I should uh, uh, really uh, just let you all know who the winner is tonight of the $25,000 prize for a painting inspired by the Australian landscape. I, I would ask you to give uh, a great big hand of applause for Ross Lowry. that um, um, the idea of a best painting and not is, is pretty wacky anyway uh, and I got lucky tonight and I hope everyone else gets lucky tomorrow. <laughs> presented by my son Chris if he would step forward and uh, I think you can introduce the artist who's won your prize. Yeah. I've seen many of these houses on my drives throughout Australia over the years. The winner of the honourable mention is Robin Sweeney. <laughs> I didn't mention uh, earlier that this is a national prize and I want to thank all the people who come from interstate. I need to ask Alex to come up from the Sydney Art Store to present his prize. And um, the next artist has come from Western Australia and, uh, uh, well, it's a great painting. Everyone loves it. and. Uh, Thank you for coming all that way, and everyone else who's travelled tonight to get here. As I say, Molly, thank you uh, for allowing the opportunity of the City Arts for being such a beautiful prize. 
I hope we can be part of next year as well. Absolutely. And when you, when you told me that this particular individual won our prize, I was very happy. So, and the winner is uh, Joshua Cocking, which is. I would now like to call to the microphone my niece, Louise Antico, who this year uh, created an inaugural prize of a two-week artist retreat at her wonderful Safala cottage. Uh, so, uh, here, here we are. Yes, we are. Here we are. Okay. Um, the artist that has been chosen for the Safala Cottage Retreat is Catherine Cassidy for her painting Falling Stars to Lenny Bell. I'm sure, as I said before, whoever won that will have a memorable two weeks. Uh, enjoy it. And I'm sure you'll do some wonderful paintings out there. Now I would like to call to the microphone Peter Sharp, uh, who will say a few words. One of our wonderful judges. And uh, he has the university prize, uh, which, which allows an artist uh, to work under Michael Pempson to create a limited edition print. And uh, this is a very sought after prize. And uh, I know so many artists in the past years have enjoyed that so much. So if, if Peter, would you come to the microphone to award that prize? Um, thank you, Marlene. I feel like I should be ducking and weaving for all the other people that didn't win. Okay, so please don't shoot me. It was actually it was actually a really difficult thing to do because I, I believe there was almost 800 entries, and the way that it was judged was really fair. But in the end, we just had to make choices, and I think we got it right. And there's a mix. I like the kind of bias. There's five prizes: three women, two men. So it was interesting the way that it worked out. But the winner of the print prize, the art design print prize, is Mary Tonkin. Thank you, Peter. And uh, again, thank you everyone for coming this evening to share uh, uh, this wonderful exhibition. There was, uh, uh, there was a thank you that I neglected to make earlier on. And that was a very important thank you. And that was to all of the artists over the last 12 years who have entered the prize. And without their support, there would be no prize. So to all the artists who aren't being hung this evening, many thanks and keep entering. And this prize will get bigger and better every year. So thank you very much. Thank you.